What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Real Estate Uncensored. We have an amazing guest, as we always do. I say that, but yet it continues to be true. Uh, I also have amazing co-hosts on this show. The Junior Grandmaster is here. He's in the co-pilot seat where he so belongs. We've got the evil bald ninja is here as well. His glasses are blinding me with the reflection off of his computer screen. He's here. We'll bring, uh, we'll bring him in a second. But first of all, my compatriot, my comrade, my partner in crime, all things podcasting related, Greg McDaniel, what's up today? What up, homie? Hey, man, I'm glad to be here. And uh, Gene is looking extra bald today. I don't think it's the reflection off his glasses. I think it's off his, off his, off of his head. Uh, you look good, dude. You look very, very bald, handsome. I'm, I'm glad to be here with you. I felt a little uncomfortable, but I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I'm glad you feel uncomfortable. That's the whole reason that we uh, have you as one of our co-hosts. Uh, but no, it's, it's actually an incredible thing. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but here in California right now, as, as, of, as of this recording, we have a ton of smoke blown in from all the fires up north. Um, I, it was so weird. The last two mornings, I was up at the dog park, and uh, I, the, the sun was rising, and it was blood red, like just glowing mm. red. And it Some was that just of yours. very creepy. I got to tell you that. But what's not creepy is Brian. Matt, you're a little weird. Gene, you're awesome. But Brian's amazing. We're glad to have him here. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, officially officially welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm very much looking forward to the next 30 or 45 minutes kind of chatting with you guys. Yeah, that's that's what everybody, everybody says. And they enjoy the first 30. It's the 45 that gets them. That's really where we lose people. So hang, hang in there with us. All right, we're going <laughs> to... Craig's shaking his head. All right, we're going to uh, talk about how to dominate your online neighborhood and, and really claim your rightful place as the digital yeah. mayor of your area, right? The most well-known online person in your in your local area, or if your area, so to speak, is a particular group of people in your town, the type of people that you wanna work with, whatever that means to you, we'll get maybe get into that and how you appeal to, uh, to people. Um, you could also just be the person uh, that runs a certain suburb and you're the best known person in that area, like Harveston in Temecula or Gig Harbor in up in Washington. There are people that dominate those areas that that's basically what they're known for. They're known for dominating a certain area and they're easy to find online and people know who they are. If you want to be that person, to me, that's the most powerful position to be in in real estate today is that you're the one that comes first to mind before they do a Google search. Because if they go Google searching for an agent, you've already lost, right? Uh, if the hell, if they go Google searching for a home, you might, you might've already lost, uh, if they, because they're going to find Zillow and about 70 other venture back capital companies before they find you. So, uh, we're going to talk about how to be the digital mayor. Um, first of all, let's talk a little IPA. So Brian, you, you alluded to this fact and you dropped it on us before we went live, uh, that you have four IPAs on tap, which I'm assuming is either in your office or your home or both. So what's the story with the IPAs on draft? Yeah, so we we so I, I work at a, a digital marketing company. We've got 14 employees. We obviously created the platform, the logo you see behind me, the faces of. But we've always been interested in craft beer. We're in the Atlanta market, uh, about 35, 40 minutes outside of Atlanta. And 10 years ago, we started a beer festival, and it's now the best beer festival in the Atlanta market. And we've had more beer at our beer fest than it's ever been had at, at one place at one time in the state of Georgia. Um, craft beer from all over the country. And wow. so we were a marketing company. One of the one year we had a sponsor, we rebuilt his, uh, he had a growler store. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the growler concept, but you can grab oh, yeah. a big handle jug and go fill up your own craft beer. Well, they were a growler company. So we rebuilt their interior environment at an outdoor event because they were the presenting sponsor. And then we took that bar and we put it up in our marketing business. And behind the wall, of the bar is we put a beer keg and we now have fully stocked craft beer on tap at the oh, office oh. and um just recently the, the partner in the firm the guy that owns our marketing company partnered with someone else and we opened a brewery um and so we have wow. access to a lot of different uniquely made craft uh, adult beverages and uh yeah to say that i'm a fan of ipas and craft beer would be an understatement i think it's awesome the creativity that's that comes out when brewers are able to mix things together to make a, a tasty adult beverage Matt, I have to tell you something uh, uh, on the show here. I'm quitting the podcast and I'm going to go work for Brian and I figured, uh, IPAs every single day. Don't say. Okay. I was going to say. I knew. I knew as soon as Brian, you said like a partner, like your your business partner went and be, and opened a brewery. I'm like, Greg's gone. So I got. <laughs> we all we all realize we're just in the wrong business. We just immediately leave the podcast and go just leave. Just. Leave. <laughs> All right. Like, Let's talk about the, uh, <laughs> the building itself. 150 years old. It's all open concept. It's super cool. And we have 
yeah, we're creative. It's what we do. We have fun. And it makes for an interesting life, for sure. So, um, Greg, but, for, but, for our, but for our audience, you did not always just have an IPA um, interest and enthusiasm. You actually also sold real estate at one point, which will tie back into what we're talking about. Um, so what, what was the story with you selling real estate in Houston? So, yeah, I lived kind of a, a bit of a journey there, and I'll condense it really short. But um, when I got out of college, I became a golf professional. Um, and I worked at a, a golf course, TPC at the Woodlands in Houston, Texas, wow. and uh, did a couple PGA events, ran a bunch of outings, taught, taught the game to a lot of members and people, and ended up selling a guy a house that um, needed some help and, and got me uh, um, considering getting out of the business, right? And Houston's a great market, and in the golf business, everybody comes to the golf course. So I became friends with a lot of um, brokers that own independent brokerages, and in those conversations, the guy convinced me to get out of working weekends and holidays and, and get in the real estate business. And so um, for, I guess for about five or six years, um, sold real estate in downtown Houston, loved everything about it. Um, eventually sold a guy a house that enticed me to get into corporate sales. And so I ended up getting away from the real estate business. And, you know, a lot of things have transpired since that. But I, I really um, enjoy people. I enjoy the profession that is professional selling and I wanted to go experience it in different capacities and and have done that and obviously to tie it back into what we just talked about as it relates to the marketing company the the husband and wife couple that own this marketing company are personal friends of mine and so there was always this dialogue around what would it look like if I was a part of this group in some capacity and so three and a half four years ago joined full-time um, and are, are using the skills that we have, graphic design, web dev, you know, social media management, and, and you know, just having fun, trying to figure out how those resources can best serve different companies and in different industries. And, you know, just kind of exploring what my journey has, has taught and kind of showcased and shown me, and then going out trying to align with, you know, different communities that need our services. And, and it's, it's unbelievable. It truly is. It's, it's very, very exciting. And, and now I'm almost all in as it relates to the real estate industry. I've spent three years yeah. building this platform and focused on trying to serve that industry in a meaningful way. And um, it's probably the most rewarding thing I've ever done. It's really, really fun what we're doing right now. Yeah, because I, I wanted to tie that in for for the viewers. You know, like you're not just part of a random marketing company. You're not here just to kind of talk about random marketing things. Uh, your clients and the platform that you've been building is uh, it really caters well to like the real estate space. And a lot of the, the clients that you work with are the agents. And you kind of did something similar to what what I did, which is you have like a background and a little bit of experience in your back history with real estate, and then somehow accidentally circle back around and the next thing you know you're selling to agents and they're all of your clients and friends and social circle and stuff like that right so i mean that that's exactly what happened to me so for anyone that's listening like we're going to talk about a strategy that directly applies to you and it's not just a general strategy that applies to you know maybe anybody anywhere uh because brian you're, you're definitely neat neck deep uh in working with you know some of the top agents across the country so uh, in fact we were going to have one of them on the show today he ended up not being able to make it so let's start maybe with uh with Brad's story, that might be a good place to start and just give people a sense of what the overall vision is. If you follow the strategy, whether you work with you guys or not, what the end goal of the strategy is and what that looks like in real life. So let's talk about Brad's experience a little bit. Yeah. So Brad Abernathy um, is born and raised in a relatively small community, 37,000 people about an hour outside of Atlanta called Gainesville, Georgia. Um, his parents were in the real estate business before him, left for a brief period, went down into Atlanta, went and got a degree at Georgia Tech, and then went straight back to Gainesville and got in real estate. He's been in real estate for 27 years and has been the top producer in his market the last 10. Um, he's a very, very high intellect. He's really good at what he does. And has always felt this pressure, you know, real estate's commission only. It's dependent on the relationships you have with your community and how well known you are. And, and to the extent that you leverage digital technology today, obviously that plays a role in it. But for a lot of Brad's career, it was just relationships, right? Like the more people that knew and were familiar with who Brad was and thought of him in a positive way, the better Brad was, <laughs> the better the business treated Brad. Mm -hmm. So 2015, he read a book called The Go-Giver. And that book, if you haven't read it, one, I recommend reading it. It's, it's a phenomenal book about how to build a world of abundance by serving others without keeping score. The whole idea is like, how can we add so much value to people that they think about us in a positive way and there's this law of 
reciprocity that exists in people. If you do something unselfishly for someone, there's a desire in them to want to return the favor. And so how can we do that at scale was the premise. And he took this book and he developed a marketing project in an effort just to be more visible. Like initially it was, how can I get four or 500 more people a month on my website? And how can I get another hundred people to follow my business Facebook page? And so he started um, a project called the Faces of Hall County. And the story behind the project was relatively simple, but it turns out it's super profound. Um, as a real estate agent, every day you listen to people tell you the story of where they came from, why they want to live in your market, what they love about your market. And, and over time, you get this sense of intimacy for what makes your community really special. And the reality is it's a special place mostly because of the quality people that live there. It's not, you know, the town center or access to the lake or whatever it is that may be a draw initially, a school system. Um, you end up falling in love with the place because there's just a lot of really cool people there. And Brad has this immense sense of pride for Gainesville, Georgia. And so he said, look, I'm going to create a marketing project and I'm going to tell the story of Gainesville, Georgia as told through the people that live here one smiling face at a time, built a website and he used that as permission to go out and have coffee with virtually anybody and everybody in his market and, and kind of lean into them, right? This isn't about real estate. This is about the role they play in helping contribute to making Gainesville a cool place to live. And so tell us a little bit about who you are. Where did you come from? What's your background? What's your family structure? What do you love so much about Gainesville? Where's your favorite place to have lunch? Who's the most interesting person you've met here? And so he started October 2015 started interviewing people in his community and, and obviously he's, he was well connected he's been there a long time but we're not talking about the who's who um we're talking about like the lady that's been the crossing guard at the local middle school for the last 20 years that everybody in the community knows but no one really knows yeah. you go give that person attention for the important role they've played and and kind of keeping the community moving along and, and being a positive place and, and obviously being a happy kind of positive contributor to the community. And then you share that story out on social media locally. Mm -hmm. It has an incredible way of grabbing people's hearts and minds and attention. Mm -hmm. And so Brad started his first interview October, 2015. He's now done over 600 interviews in Gainesville, Georgia. His website has gone from 500 monthly visitors to over 8,000 in a market of 37,000 people. Um, his social media, his business Facebook page had a hundred followers in 2015. Today it has over 3000. And, uh, again, he was the top producer. He did $26 million in production in Gainesville in 2015. Last year, um, he and his team did $52 million and the gap between him and second place is significant in terms yeah. of production and where he sits in his market. Like mm -hmm. if you look at the, the trajectory, lots of, Lots of people continue to get in this business, as we all know. Mm -hmm. About 40% more agents did a transaction in his market last year than they did when he started in 2015. So if you look at the, the production of the top 20 agents in his market, they've all lost market share. And Brad has grown market share by 30% in that time. Gotcha. And this isn't a guy, this is really the, the primary way that he markets his brand. He has had 22 high school interns come through and get involved with this project with him and you know, he's now on multiple boards in his town and he's gotten to know lots of influential people as a way of celebrating his community. And um, it's just been it's been unbelievable what's happened to Brad. And so Brad and I met January of 2018 and there was a desire to explore how can we how can we package this in a way where we can help somebody do this in every community in the country? Yeah. And initially that somebody was left open to any community-based business, right? You could be an attorney, you could be a financial advisor. Frankly, you could open, you can own a local restaurant. Like community-based businesses live and thrive off of the relationship they have with their community. And so if we can foster a way for that, that relationship to be stronger and that visibility to be better, um, more significant, and for you to develop influence, which I think is a really important part of this, is the way the community actually looks at you from success for a project like this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what would that look like? And, you know, as we just talked about, I have a marketing firm, I've got graphic designers, and I've got website developers, and, we, you know, we've got the resources to do something really fun with this. And so Brad initially was looking for a partner to help him build websites, and I convinced him that we should be partners in the business, like that I think mm -hmm. that we could do something really cool with this. So we spent the last three years basically licensing what we do in communities all over the country exclusively with one agent per community. And, um, you know, we're now in 36, 37 states, um, 
I have a partner in Ontario, Canada now, and, and that is now blossoming. Uh, I have a partner in Australia. Like it's incredible what, you know, who can find you and how from the internet and, and just like the ways I found partners because, you know, a partner of ours up in Wisconsin shared the story of their niece out on social media. And so she reached out to us from Oregon wanting to do that in her neighborhood. Like it's just, there's nothing but goodness that comes from this, Matt. It, yeah. it, like nobody loses, everybody wins. Um, and it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done. If, if we find the right person that has a servant orientation, right? Truly is liberated by the power that is created by serving others. When they see what we're doing, it's just an easy decision. And, you know, we're growing pretty quickly right now. But Brad has, you know, has cemented his place. He's now one of the top 50 producers in the state of Georgia. And, he's, you know, he's not in the Atlanta metro, which is where most of those producers reside, um, largely because of his desire to, to be an ambassador for the community that he lives and works in and sells every day. And I think it's a great testament to what's possible when we put other, other people's interests ahead of our own. Yeah, love it. Yeah, most people would kill to pull 50 million in production out of a major metro area. And he's pulling it when his home base is 37,000 people. That's absolutely insane. Like total, in a good way, no, not in a negative way, but just total domination. Like the ability to be that number one, the first person that people think about. So there's a lot that we can reflect on there. Greg, what are your initial thoughts? You want to talk about the strategy first before we get into uh, specifics? Because I might want to dive into some very specific things. But what do you think of the overall strategy of interviewing people in your community, sending, putting that content on a website, sending that out to a database. I mean, it sounds very similar to some of the things that you've done with your uh, community oriented videos, but um, really focusing on putting the spotlight on other people rather than the spotlight on the agent, which I think would be counterintuitive to most agents who want to get up there and talk about market stats, for example, you know, which is the most boring fucking thing on God's green earth. I mean, well, that is the problem, isn't fucking, it? Who, who the fuck wants to learn about market stats? When in reality, if you can go to Bob's Pizza and get a discount for buy one, get one free, um, or you can go to a shoe shop, or you can go to a local bar and talk about what they're doing that's different, or talk to a school principal or the chief of police. I've done all of these um, mm -hmm. and really kind of get involved and really get you know hyper local, then go in and use like something like vid IQ, uh, get the uh, video tags and ch channel tags and see what's trending in your area. S you know, s you know, then hopscotch over the other people who've been doing this stuff for a long time on YouTube, take those videos, put them on your, on your, on your page as well. So you, now you're getting double taps on this thing, but it's not about you. It's about the community. I think it's a fantastic idea. I've been doing it for a while and it's, it is the most rewarding thing ever because it's not about it's not the me 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 show it's the i'm going to give back to the community show um and people don't know what to do with themselves when it comes to this stuff like they're like wait what's the cost on this you're like your time that's it nothing else if you want to give five bucks to push behind it for you know a couple of days great if not i'll do it myself but i just want to get your content and highlight you and you can take it and push it out to your database. Then you guys can you can take their database and share it into yours. And now you now you just quadrupled your database uh, if they're willing to share it with you. If you bring enough value to them, but yeah, no, what what Brad's done is incredible, incredible um, feat. And by the way, uh, Brian Gainesville uh, off air, we were talking about the me having to walk to the wedding. Uh, it was in Gainesville, Georgia. Just so you know, no kidding. No, I'm not kidding at all. That's very funny. That. I do uh, a quick time out too. I, obviously, it, I work at a marketing company. I understand the importance of video. We are using high res imagery. We're not using video because I want this to be something that can be done consistently, sharing a sto couple stories every week, like yeah. at least two stories. And we can leverage technology to automate the whole thing so we can get somebody's story on the website with very little effort. And then we use social media and the database, obviously, to push it back out in front of the community um, and, and continually exploring the impact of trying to incorporate video. But videos adds an element of work, right? You've got to take time to get some cool video created. And, and so today, and I just I say this only so we don't have any confusion. I don't want anybody that watches this to reach out to us looking forward to a, a, you know, a really cool video platform because that's not what we are. I understand where, where and why video works, but today we're intentionally not leveraging video in that way and so if you Brian, 
Brian, a question for you when it comes to doing the photos and when you do your edits and everything else, is there a way to take the sheen off of Gene's head so he can look just as handsome as you? <laughs> I suspect if we were to investigate Gene's lighting and the way he's got his uh, studio set up, that there probably would be some things we could do. But, um, you know, for fear of hurting Gene's feelings in any way, I'd, I'd rather just stick to the topic of real estate and, and leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Leave, leave the insulting gene up to the professionals. We we got it. We're, we we we. <laughs> right. But that is interesting, though. Yeah, like uh, like I think that um, so for so for a lot of folks that are in like the let's say the corporate world and especially the thought leadership world, like running content where you're asking people to be on video is less of a big deal, right? Like uh, most of my friends are are coaches, consultants, speaker, author types, they're kind of used to it. They get it like, yeah, you know, it was a, it was a pain in the butt. And now all of a sudden we couldn't go to live events. And now we have to do everything on zoom, but it's like, they already kind of knew it. And then all of, um, you know, people like my mom that rolled into an office every day for 30 years or whatever it's been, all of a sudden she had to learn to use zoom, but it's not at a comfort level. And so I do like the fact, like Brian, you mentioned, I mean, I come out of an agency that did, you know, video and email marketing for agents and for the right people, if you're selective in a certain way, you can invite them on and you can have them on video with you. But most people are not comfortable. So not doing video does allow you to expand that and basically just have like be able to feature them, be able to put the spotlight on them without putting them in an uncomfortable position. So it does kind of open up the range of people that you can speak to, right? Not just from a real estate agent perspective, like you'd be surprised how many agents are still intimidated by technology in some way. Well, right? and, sadly, yeah. we would not be surprised. We know. <laughs> right? so I don't, I don't want, if, if you if you read the book, The Go-Giver, and you have a deep desire to play that role for your community, that's who I want to work with, right? Someone that's willing to put the work into this project and make it something really cool. And so I don't want technology to be the reason that they struggle. But then forget about the environment you just described. We're talking about first responders and people that work in the hospital and people that work in the school system and people that run nonprofits. And yeah, they're not always as excited about getting on video. And so it's like, can I watch that back? And I think I said that funny, can we take that again? Like you're, right. you're taking a, an environment that would benefit greatly for some raw, unedited, just sincere content, but you're making it so much harder. There's just more friction. Mm -hmm. And that alone can can derail a real estate agent, right? It's hard enough just to manage your business and, and do the things you need to do every day, let alone build some of this stuff on top of it. And so mm -hmm. one of my driving desires, uh, so the, the company, our goal is to create closer community all over the country. Mm -hmm. And it will largely happen with real estate agents. But but I really want to have an impact from you for Georgia on, you know, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, right? And right. so I, I want to find the right person. And I have just found that it's easier for everybody involved, the agent and the community, if we just keep it to high res imagery and we leverage social well. And like our partner up in Whitby, Ontario, Canada, in four weeks of starting this project and promoting it on socials, had over 5,000 people in his market visit his website. Like it worked. It doesn't have to have video, it's so hyper local. We're not trying to get our shares out all around the Atlanta Metro or all around Georgia or all around the Southeast. I just want our partner to own their community of 30, 40, 50,000 people. And that referral base will take them all over the place, right? They'll work in a market much bigger than where they focus. But if we can make them famous, and I always ask, like, where do you want the center of your sphere of influence to radiate from? Where do we want to push out from? Where's that core? If we can make you famous there, you'll have a significant real estate business forever. Um, and so it's intentionally simplified because I don't want that to be any reason that we don't have success. Um, and I think about this constantly, like, is there a way we could better utilize video? But I keep coming back to not today, not right now. Um, let's keep making progress and let's make impact in these communities we serve and let's keep finding the right people. And then let's listen to what our partners have to say and, and how we can use their experience to, to better the platform. Hmm. Love it. I like the I like the the whole and Gene, you've been creepily quiet when you do that. I get freaked out and I'm start I start mm -hmm. my, my my toes start twitching because I know you're plotting something behind the scenes. Thank um, God it's your toe. Not anything <laughs> else that we can see. But the thing is, is like when it comes to doing the photos versus the video, and it really allows people to um, 
not be intimidated but do you guys step up into video or do you stay just with photos so that you guys can stay consistent so one of the one of the so when you from the website you can share a story um there's a facebook icon right on every one of our stories and when you click it it creates a shareable post on, on facebook so the facebook post is a, a nice high-res image of the person you highlighted with a little tickler intro and then a clickable link back to the website instead of doing it that way when I met, you know, Jane Doe and we had a coffee and we got to know each other personally and I was getting her story on the website, I could shoot a little 30 second intro video with my smartphone that's not produced. It's, it's just us two in the moment. And I could use that little video as what I push out on social and then put the link to the story in that social yeah. post to take them back to the website that way. And it doesn't take time. It's super casual. People actually prefer that evergreen sort of un, unedited stuff. Yeah. Um, and so mm -hmm. and that's how I recommend for our partners to kind of explore it. I don't think anybody wants to listen to a half an hour conversation, you know, and then the effort required to edit it down and, and kind of do all that stuff. And so um, yeah, a quick intro is good for the person that was interviewed. When you do that hundreds of times a year, they get the community gets a sense that they know who you are and certainly they're familiar with your project, but you don't, it's just short, it's 20, 30 second, bursts that just introduce the next person you're highlighting. Um, and, and that is a way that it can be leveraged, I think, appropriately and still manage both sides, right? Make it easy, you get executable, but still leverage the benefit of, in the sharing capacity and viewing viewership of, of video itself. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's great. Just stacking on stacking on super authentic raw video for the people that are comfortable with it. But the main like the part that you guys are helping with is produced and based on photography and text and things that you that's very easy to control and also very easy for the person that they don't really have to worry about. They can just have a conversation with somebody and they have this great piece of content. And then if they want to stack on top of that video by going out directly to social media, that the bottom line is that's what social media companies want anyway. They don't want the heavily edited video. They definitely don't want long video. Like we see that in our, even in our own numbers on Facebook lives and stuff. So yeah, that makes to me that makes total sense that that's in line with where social media is going and that's so the website's the content right we call it the time capsule the website represents the story of your community in time there'll be hundreds of people there anybody wants to re reaches out to you and says hey we're thinking about moving to you know your town usa you know i understand you're a real estate agent there you know can you tell me some things to look, go read and look out for as it relates to your town you know go check out my site listen to hundreds of people talk about what what it's like to live here, right? So you have this sort of time capsule. And I think it's important because social media becomes a distribution channel. And over time, mm -hmm. those preferred distribution channels change. And so I want to have this website and I want it to be short form, you know, copy that will, will live forever. Those stories of those people and that story of that community is going to be there forever. But the way we get it out in front of our audience will change repeatedly over time. And I want the flexibility to, to do whatever works to get our, our you know, our partners, the, the greatest, you know, impact is how I would describe it, but obviously visibility with that. So just for, for everyone who's listening and everything right now on the podcast, uh, when you say short form, uh, describe the, what, what, what quantifies and qualifies as a short form. Is it 30 seconds? Is it two minutes? Is it 10 minutes? Is it two hours? I mean, Matt cannot wait to spend two hours with me every day, seven days a week, filming and recording then he gets to edit every piece of it and you know he loves that stuff he lives for it. he thrives off of it but i mean for the other folks out there and everyone who's listening everyone is dying laughing behind the scenes um what would what would short form look like for an average agent so that they get a real idea about it so if you were to if we were to pull up one of our sites but the, the reality is i think that a consumer should be able to read someone else's story in three or four minutes Right. Mm. And so we're not actually offering paragraphs. It's not a story, as you would think, like you're reading a book. We actually present it as a little intro paragraph, maybe three or four sentences, and then a series of question and answer and as though the reader is actually experiencing the interview for themselves. We just want them in a couple minutes to get a sense for who the person is they're reading about. Where do they come from? What's their family structure? What are some unique interests of theirs? What do they specifically like about our community? And as I read about that from someone that I may well see as I'm out and about, I will naturally find some things in common or some things that I feel like I align with. And that will create conversation. 
if if we see each other out and about. I will say I will mention that I saw you in the faces of, and that'll you know we'll create some dialogue. And so that's part of my interest is helping community members connect with each other. But you know, if we wrote twelve paragraphs about Jane Doe, we wouldn't. Nobody would finish it, right? Yeah. And so that's why that that introductory video I think should be really short, 20, 30 seconds. Um, the content that you read when you go to the website to read about any one person, two or three minutes it takes you to get through it. Mm-hmm. What's really interesting is when I discover how short they are, I find myself reading about 10 or 12 people. I end up staying there for 30 minutes, mm-hmm. right? And so I, there are a lot of things that have gone into what increases viewership and increases people following because it's not only not a lot of work for the, our partners that are doing it, but it's not a lot of work for the consumer to get a lot of satisfaction and benefit from it. And, and so there's this reciprocal value exchange. Um, and it, man, it's, it just works. It has this way of helping people, you know, it's just so, it's so rewarding when a partner said, like I've done three interviews and I've got them out on social and I just was getting gas and someone walked up to me and said, aren't you the person doing the faces of like just instantly they, they have a sense for how many people and the power of social media, which can be underappreciated at times. Um, so, but it, yes, see. Let me ask you a question because I, I love where you're going with this, Brian. I, I think that you guys are really onto something. Obviously, you already know this. That's why you're on the show with us today. Um, but the thing is, like TikTok, um, you know, TikTok. I'm addicted to TikTok. I, I'm gonna admit it. I'm, I'm a TikTok anonymous. Uh, I have to, you know, take myself off of it. Gene and Brian are laughing their asses off. Matt's looking at me. I'm like, just, what the I'm, in, I'm just envisioning you. you. Instead of going to AA, you go to TNA, which makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> There's so many jokes about what you just said. Okay. I just go to TNA. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, but uh, the hey, you're the one that called the TikToks anonymous. I mean, come on. I can't. I can't just let that let that go. Come on. <laughs> okay. Well played. Well played, sir. Thank you. Uh, the the thing is, is that like TikTok. What the, what's so good about them is that it gives you the ability to edit those those videos. They're short. They're 15 to 30 seconds to maybe a minute long. And you know if they're good, they're good. They get hundreds of thousands of views, and I will watch that shit for hours. And like I'm on my walk, I'm taking the dog for a walk, or I'm out like you know doing something, and I just need something in my ear to you know stimulate my brain to think about something different than whatever I'm dealing with. Is that kind of the direction you guys are going in right now? Is is that really snappy, short form? you know, content, and then you can repurpose it on multiple different sites. So you put it on your website, then you can put it on TikTok, then you can put it on stories on Facebook and Instagram, or you solely focusing just on your website. No. So Facebook is the highest performing distribution channel. Still, um, we have, we have different partners that leverage different social media, right? Everybody's not comfortable with TikTok yet. <laughs> I've been where you are, Greg. I, I lost, you know, four or five hours one night of my life to uh, <laughs> an accident, right? Just watched a couple videos and then I'm like, oh my God, it's one o'clock in the morning. Um, and so I took it off my phone. I don't have TikTok right now, but um, like we mess around with Instagram, which is a highly visual platform. It's a great place to go grab people's attention and get them back to the site. But still, you know, most real estate agents, the, the consumer that they're ideally targeting is going to be in their late thirties to their, you know, up to 60 years old and, and that's still Facebook's a really good platform for that still. And so it's, it's a lot of, you, you can boost a post in a small market like we serve like Gainesville, Georgia for three or $4. So you can make a, a nice high red smiling image of somebody, put it out in front of every consumer in Gainesville it, with a little bit of copy that has a storytelling nature to it. And you would just be floored by the number of people that click through from that image and, and end up on your site reading about others. Um, and the idea of short content is just, that's just where we are, right? As a society, everybody mm-hmm. needs their content right now. They don't want to take too much time digging, digging into it. Um, but if you can do it short and valuable, you'll get more of their time, right? And that's the whole trick is to, to deliver really good content. And so, you know, we just have developed an interview form, right? An interview strategy that has re- re- questions that the answers are intriguing enough that the reader wants to go see how other people in their community have answered it because they relate to those questions. And, and I think most of us want to feel like we're a part of something, Greg. And I found yeah. it's way where we live. Right. And so there's this natural curiosity to want to know who our neighbors are. And so the sort of humanitarian side of what we're doing, where we're introducing our neighbors to each other and I'm getting a lot of 
personal satisfaction from learning about who my neighbors are. And I've made some friends out and about since this project started because I read about their stories and we started some conversation. Like we literally can bring a community together in some sense. And that emotional kind of grabbing the hearts, um, the hearts and minds of the people of our community, kind of tugging on their heartstrings a little bit and pulling them in. It creates a real sense of loyalty around a project like this, which drives up our engagement, which drives up our shares and, and everything else that social media provides for you to create incredible reach and incredible visibility from a concept, honestly, that's relatively simple. It's, it's just not that hard to execute. We just, you know, we've got hundreds of people telling us how the, part, the project can be better. And so we're just constantly tweaking and, and, and making changes to make it as easy to use as possible. But um, yeah, I'm not necessarily modeling TikTok, right? Or are going down that direction. I just understand conceptually why it worked. And we're trying to keep it limited to imagery and copy. Yeah. Well, so, what does that, uh, Gene, what does that ex like advantage give you when you start with basically imagery and text? Uh, yeah, you're not going to be able to reach TikTok, but you know, the, the home buyers of the present aren't on TikTok anyway, unless they're trying to monitor their 13 year olds. Um, <laughs> so, so, uh, so how do you, how do you take something that is, um, and essentially it's a blog post that goes on a website. And I think people have been struggling with, well, how do I promote that on social media? So you've got some imagery of the of the person, right? Uh, maybe you have some imagery of the community and stuff like that. Uh, Gene, what would, you, what would you do with that? And what do you see working on Facebook to make sure that that content actually gets in front of the people that we, you want to see it? Uh, I think <laughs> Brian laid out the the recipe, man. I, I am seriously reconsidering everything I know in life right now. <laughs> like seriously, I, no, I, I'm and I'm being honest because mm -hmm. when, he, when he went like this, when he said, "Yeah, no, no, I want to be clear, we're not doing video." You know where I went? I went, "Oh God, right?" Like I knew that's it. been my that's been my mo for the last 15 years, and I'm sticking to it. But this is this is brilliant. Like this is brilliant because one of the things that we always find is that so so Brian, I, you don't know this, but I have this concept up here called the best of, and it's the same sort of concept as what you're doing, except we go after local business owners, right? So you're taking it another step and talking to real people. And we create interview style videos, but that's me. I, I can do that. I'm not afraid to be on camera. Right. The, there are so many clients that we talk to that go, we love this idea. Yes. And then we can't get them to do a video. Like yeah. I just love the simplicity of, no, 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 it's slick. It doesn't have to be crazy. Go out, make, go make, go make friends. We'll record some of it, take a picture and we move on. So you got me all screwed up, man. <laughs> you do. You got me all screwed up. I we're it. talking about. I know. But we're talking about. You, you've got different different clients for different types of services. Some are going to be native video people. I mean, you've got some people on the other end of the spectrum that they're so so comfortable with video, they'll never hire anyone to help with their social media because they don't need it. But like that's. I mean, to be honest, that's kind of Greg. I mean, Greg, you've done the video thing for years, but that's not how you got fifteen thousand people following you on Instagram. Like you did it by just doing it because you're you're a kind of a digital native at this point and you just enjoy being on social media so yeah you don't necessarily like there's just there's people all over the spectrum and i think what we're uh, going matt, for here is just that's all matt, it's all aiming for matt, the same status matt yes it is Greg. nineteen thousand two hundred. do not fucking cut me off the name okay <laughs> instagram sure. followers well, that's that's the last time I checked your Instagram. Listen, when Kim you were, Kardashian, you that. down over there. That's that's how that's how little I pay attention to your Instagram, Greg. Look, interrupt for just a second. Such a tiny percentage of the population, as it relates to realtors in this country, want to serve all of Metro Atlanta, right? Like, like most real estate agents are trying to figure out how to do twenty or thirty transactions a year in Gainesville, Georgia, and. I, I just like video gives you one. It's, it's lots of extra effort. It gives you incredible reach and you could own a market like Atlanta with really quality video and, and, and a lot of production. I just like, that's not who I want to serve. Right. We one from a business model we're we're land constricted. There's only so many communities. Right. And so I want to be in every community and Salida, Colorado of 9,000 people isn't going to want to spend a ton of money to do a ton of, really nice video right but if i can show them an hour or two hours a week you can do something really cool and really celebrate everybody and get the attention of everybody in salita and you can spend a couple hundred bucks a month with me we we just make ourselves available to really set out and do what we want to do which is 
really unify communities all over this country. And, and for me to do that, I want it to be cost effective. I want it to make sure it doesn't require a lot of time. Not, there's effort. The effort is in my desire to go communicate and connect with people one-on-one, -on -one, right? The effort is in the partner's desire to tell the story and meet people. But the actual admin and the way we use technology, it doesn't require a ton of effort. We've, we've minimized it. And so there are parts of it that are really important to me that I know the marketing community is going to say, oh, you're you're doing this all wrong. But I can tell you when you look at our analytics, we're not. Like this no. work. Yeah. No. no well, I think what you've tapped into, percent. yeah, what you've tapped into is that the people that get interviewed, it gives them something easy to share. And it gives the people that they, the, who knows them a reason to consume that content and maybe even spread it beyond that. I think that, that one of the things that agents have a really hard time finding and tapping into is the type of content that people actually want to consume and then share and pass on, right? Because it's one thing if you're in the market and you want to hear from an agent about what's going on in the market, great. That's three months out of every seven years. The rest of the time, you don't give a crap. And maybe you know somebody that's looking for a home, but that doesn't mean you want to consume an agent's content, which is why, by the way, I don't recommend, like like you talked about, Brian, we, you don't recommend agents running a 45-minute podcast interview with people in their community where you talk about real estate and mortgage and stuff like that. It just doesn't, doesn't work. I don't even know if it works for half the people doing radio. I mean, honestly, um, yes, so doing it as a podcast, I don't, I don't recommend, um, come on, Gene, we can talk about that off air. There's plenty of people that, that <laughs> Greg, think it works. Made Greg mad. <laughs> you made yeah. Greg mad. Um, but anyway, point being, um, uh, I think agents have right. always had a hard time tapping into the content that people want to share. And when you put point the spotlight at somebody else and at the community, then they're, you're giving people a reason to share it. Both the people that are interviewed, the people that are in their life, and anybody that finds kind of a human interest element in it. So this is almost like taking the stuff that you would normally find in a small town newspaper in the human element section um, and putting this online. And unfortunately right now with all the small town new newspapers kind of being crowded out of the market, like, hey, maybe there's a spot in people's psyche where they miss that type of that small town type of content where they feel connected to other people uh and this can can um, kind of replace well, that part of what used to be on your local news or in, in your local weekly newspaper it's well, i mean you can build an audience and i think audience is a critical element that all real estate agents are trying to figure out how am i i mean in, in brad's market alone 20 2700 agents did a transaction there last year right why would someone pick brad and how does the consumer today even know what a good real estate agent looks like, honestly, right? So you, you got to figure out how to differentiate yourself and create a way to be to stay top of mind. And the only way the only way top of mind awareness can come from, to your point, is by sharing content that's resonant on a more consistent basis. And that's not real estate content. And yeah, so exactly. we, we check a lot of boxes from a marketing and branding perspective. The, honestly, the biggest challenge for most people is that I'm going to ask them never to talk about real estate. Yeah. Um, and understand that if you, if you, if you read into just human psychology and, and the benefit and the world you can create by serving others and adding significant value to a, a scalable group of people, um, you know, it's just unbelievable what's possible, but it's not, it's not for everybody, but yeah. fortunately the technology and the, and the cost structure has created it to where I just got to go find the right person. Um, cause virtually anybody in this business can afford it. And so, yeah, it's super exciting and it's a fun conversation. I'm enjoying this a lot. Yeah. Good. Well, how do people find out about it? Like how do they learn more about it, get a sense of it and, and check you guys out? So we're, you could go to the website, which is the faces um, probably the easiest place to start. And there's obviously stuff you would find in every website like there's the call to action button and you can fill out an info form and, and schedule a call with me and i'd be happy to show you exactly how it works and there's some videos on there and um probably the best way to start they could you know you can reach out to me directly it's b-r-i-a-n-w at v-d-g-a-t-l.com um but you know we're not we're not that hard to find the faces of.com would love to explore anybody that when you get to the website, we've got an existing partner map and you can see if your market's available because we do this exclusively with one agent per market. So once we license a market to someone, obviously that market's no longer available and we want to do everything we can do to help that agent be as successful as we possibly can. And so um, plenty of markets available at this point because we're relatively young, but I suspect two or three years from now, we'll be telling a completely different story. 
Yeah. Well, what's nice yeah. about it is that you can focus on smaller areas. So a market is not Atlanta. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. We have somebody that's across town 45 minutes away from me. Can't work with you. Um, so yeah, that's you right. solve that problem. All right. So then, Greg, what's the best way to connect with you? Uh, get a hold of Matt, guys. His number is no. 402-551-1122. <laughs> um, he will come over and wash your car with rocks. It is fantastic. It really kind of roughs out the, 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 the surfaces there. You can go <laughs> repaint it. Um, but in all honesty, guys, go ahead and reach out to me. Uh, 925-915-1978. Um, we are working aggressively on the back end. Uh, with a couple of different partners and we are putting together some really fun stuff we're going to go from a small pack uh, to a large pack uh, and we're putting together a trucking side of the whole industry uh, so you guys when you join our 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 our, our, uh, our, our exp team if you want to do that there's a, just a lot of good stuff not to mention uh jeans on tap matt's on tap i'm on tap our, our partners are on tap we're here to help you build your businesses so get a hold of me at that phone number you guys know the number matt what's my phone number oh it's 915-925-1978 it haunts my dreams it does haunt his dreams i'm like a i'm like the the christmas ghost that never goes away uh gene how can people get a hold of you uh i'm still taking um you can you can come and do a uh a test spin with me on the facebook uh gene j volpe how about that well that's good I mean, I, gvi Listen, media I'm, is actually probably where, where you want to go you can look at this stunned beautiful well i think gene's nah. in between websites he's he's I, rebuilding i'm in between i'm in between everything right now brian just destroyed me I, i'm rethinking <laughs> everything in life i'm rethinking hey, everything in life <laughs> Oh my god. That's good stuff, Greg. Gene, happy to circle uh, back and do lots of stuff with you, just me and you, if that would be helpful for you at some point down the road. Listen, the website looks amazing. The concept is brilliant. I love everything about it. Thank you. Um, and then Matt, you have yes. written a pamphlet. What is it called? It's Michael Johnson. I mean, micro famous. I am so sorry. I screw that up every single time. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so you can get a digital copy on getmicrofamous.com or you can get a free, uh, or not free, but you can get a physical copy. If you're a physical copy person, you can get that on Amazon. That is for coaches, consultants, thought leaders. Uh, if you want to build a following, build influence online so that you are famously influential to the right people, that essentially is the start to finish playbook to do it, including uh, all the stuff that you need on podcasting, being a guest on podcasts, and uh, and then splitting that content up for social media in a way that actually works as opposed to wasting your everyone's time. So yeah, that's at getmicrofamous.com along with all the writings that I do every week for um, for that crowd. Nice. I love it. Guys, and, and I, I fuck with Matt all the time, but it seriously is a good book. It, it seriously is a very good book. So go get it immediately. Uh, Matt and Gene, you need to do your jobs and we need colors for the bow on the show. So Matt, what is your color for the bow? Mm. Uh, let's go with uh, denim blue. Denim blue. Okay, denim yeah. blue. And Gene, what's your color? Pewter. Ooh, that's God, a nice are... color scheme. I like that. You guys are fucking weird. Okay, <laughs> guys, thank you for watching this show. Uh, we can't do it without you. Guys, go out and give us a five-star, not a two-star review on every single place you listen or watch uh, all of our podcasts. It helps the algorithm show it up to more people. Uh, we are going with a denim, denim blue and a pewter bow on this show. Brian, you're absolutely amazing. Guys, please Go out there and give him a little bit of love and give him a hashtag uh, so that he can uh, understand that you guys liked his content. Brian, you're a legend amongst men. Matt, you are incredible. Gene, you're legendary. I love everyone. Until next time, peace out, ninjas. We gone.